road trip from South Carolina to Atlanta. Um, I've been having a puff of smoke, oil smoke, coming up the passenger side of the car. Now, I will admit, I forgot the dipstick. I was checking my oil, I was in a rush, I left the dipstick on the shop table. You know what you are? You're a dipstick, a 14 yeah. carat So I drove dipstick. in, I put a, a vacuum cap over the dipstick, tightened it down, but I kept noticing that I was still getting oil vapor and smoke, and it was driving me crazy, because everything on top of the motor is clean. So I decided to take the lower cover off, and I've discovered something while I was at the car wash that this grill here was discolored. And you can see, significant. Now that's the heat exchanger for the supercharger. And as you can see by all of the fins, this thing sees quite a bit of road duty. So what my, and you can see that is wet right there. That's the impact absorber and it's covered. It's got tons of oil residue all over it. And it's coming from what appears to be a transmission cooler. As I was walking around here, I'm noticing I've got oil residue all over the right side of the car. And again, nothing is leaking oil on the side from the valve covers. Everything up there is absolutely dry. There's no oil debris ahead of here. So what's happening is the oil is dripping out of here. This is all wet gets caught by the airflow and you see that's most definitely been holding oil inside the scoop that's the scoops and you see this one's dry but you see this scoop is angled to the passenger side of the car forces air and what it's been doing is it's been sending all of the oil when i drive the car fast the airflow captures it comes through here blows it onto this side and it comes right down here and gets on to this cat and then burns. And then the smoke just comes and radiates up through the passenger side. It's been driving me crazy. So now I'm gonna take all this apart and we're gonna take this cooler off. All right, car's in the air. Since I don't have any means of brake torquing the transmission on the lift, I've got the heater underneath the transmission. Transmission pan is 156. Right at the thermostat, it's 230, 240 degrees. Cats are a little hotter. So that's giving me my temperatures so that the thermostat will open up. And this is the top as it sits in here. So gravel and crap comes through here and we're seeing that that's the mark that's been on my radiator. And I've noticed that for the last couple of days on this road trip and this is filled. This little seam rides right up in here. So rock got caught right up in here. And there's a break there. There's another one here, and when I run my finger along it, my finger's wet. Now that's just idle. This is why when I'm just driving slow, I'm not noticing anything. But if I get on it, and I start hitting the gears hard, it's dripping. She's busted. Needs a new transmission auxiliary cooler. And yes, the ZLE does go through the factory radiator. So we're gonna be taking that out. And uh, yep, now we figured it out. We'll raise her up, let her cool off. We've diagnosed this one. Time to replace the heat exchanger and go big. Now I've got this on a wide angle view on my iPhone. So it makes it a little easier to show 
the path that the fluid goes from the transmission to the front of the car. It doesn't just go from the transmission to this auxiliary cooler. The path goes from this thermostat. Now this thermostat, the factory thermostat, only opens at 190 degrees. Until it gets to 190 degrees, which I believe is way too late, all of the cooling is done by the aluminum pan here. I had to put the heater, as you saw, underneath the pan just to get the temperature up high enough that this thermostat would open up and reveal that I have a leak in the heat exchanger. But before it makes that journey there, it goes out of this thermostat, all the way down the back of the car, up over the exhaust again, and into the rear axle, or the rear differential, the ELSD. Then it comes out, goes back, takes a ride along the hot exhaust, and then it goes forward. Now remember, this is hot, 100, 200 degree automatic transmission fluid. Because, you know, if you're road racing, it's going to be hot. It's going to be over 200 degrees. So this line goes over here, up, and it crosses over, goes up to the top of your radiator, way up there, goes through the side of the radiator. And I'm talking about the cooling radiator for the engine is now sharing the temperature of the transmission and the rear axle heated remotely by the exhaust underneath the car. Then it comes out of that and goes into the auxiliary cooler that's mounted here. Then it comes from the auxiliary cooler all the way back past the catalytic converter, crosses over, and goes right here, back into the thermostat. Well, that's great if you're gonna daily drive a ZL1 1LE. Me, not so much. Now that you've seen the path that the transmission fluid for the A10 ZL1 1LE Camaro has to take to go from the transmission to the rear ELSD, then all the way back to the front of the car, goes all the way up to the top of the engine radiator, then comes down, goes from the bottom of the engine radiator on the driver's side into the input of the auxiliary cooler, goes across the auxiliary cooler, comes out of the auxiliary cooler, and goes back to the transmission. Now that you've seen that, this is why I'm isolating each one of these systems. I'm going to make the cooler from the transmission go straight to this auxiliary cooler and not to the engine radiator. The transmission is going to have its own cooling system, the rear axle will have its own cooling system. The supercharger will have its own cooling system. And then the oil system will be going through its own oil cooler with its own thermostat control. And then that way, I know that none of these systems are crisscross or cross-linked or whatever they want to call it from the factory. And that the temperatures are isolated specifically due to the fluid's capability of dispersing heat. And I think that's the way to go. At least for reliability, for track days, for running, consistent laps over and over and over. Another note, if you look at it, these Michelin PS4s have 13,000 miles on them. And you guys know I've been pretty hard on them. But look at that. That's even tire wear all the way across the car. Even a nice little burnout occasionally even tire wear and that's a, a really really long track day <laughs> worth a tread on there easy if i wanted to track these tires and i'm just depressed gran turismo east did the alignment on this car and while i am really frustrated about all of the gravel that's collected coming through the nose of the car and getting trapped here that's what cracked this. That's what's got a little pinhole leak in this. Is this one little tube right here. And it's just dripping fluid and making it wet right there. And it's just one little thing like that that can ruin your day. If you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to do a lot of cool upgrades to my ZL11LE. 
And if you've got questions, leave a comment. I answer all the comments that I see. I've got an idea of where I want to go with this car and what I want it to do. And I've done a tremendous amount of research. Um, coming up on my 56th birthday, I tell people I'm 25 with 30 years of experience. Here we go with one more year of experience. And if you want to experience your car on a track in a safe environment with a lot of other people that are having a great time, I'm starting to host my own private track days starting at Roebling Road on April 9th. I'll have this car at the track. We'll have a lot of other cool cars there. So come on out, have a great time. But be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you can see how I end up fixing this. I'm probably gonna create my own heat exchanger for the A10 transmission. Nobody's done that yet and nobody has um, isolated these systems so that they all work independently. These cars are designed for the little girl who gets it for graduation to guys like me who take it to a track day and literally beat the hell out of the car. So I want to make it as reliable as I can. And when you look at the racing version, the Pratt version, Pratt & Miller uh, GT4.R car, every one of their systems is independent. They do not share cooling systems. That's one of the things that I'm doing to this is I'm isolating all of the cooling systems for each part of this car. And I'm going to do it in a way that I can duplicate that and help you do the same to your car. So maybe you can get the same results that I foresee that I will have. And we'll see. We'll track it. If it doesn't work, we'll make some other changes until it does. Anyway, have a blessed day, and God bless America. All right. We're at Road Atlanta, and we're on line. We're going on the track. <laughs> track day.